So these are the file effects I have on my desk today. Uh, this one is a Filefax Portland Mini, which I'm using as a wallet. Uh, this is a four-ring English-made Filefax, which I'm using in part to house a journal and a 12-month diary and, and some notes. I have my Guildford Mini extra slim EDC which I carry in my pocket every day and I have my Filofax Sherwood which I've had for 29 years and I'm using it as a reference source but but there is another Filofax on my desk and this is the this is the subject of today's video it's a Norman and Hill Filofax, so vintage Filofax, and it dates from somewhere between 1979 and a long time in the past. Who knows? But more of that later. Um, but I absolutely love this binder as a working tool. It's not a thing of beauty. In fact, it's very, very utilitarian. It's made of grained Morocco leather, which was uh, very, very common. It's it was the it it was probably the most common material to make vintage filofaxes back in the day. English-made filofaxes, very hard wearing and and very reasonably priced you've got the norman and hill logo let's see if i can get that into focus and my lights here um, are daylight color balance so what you see in the video is is more or less what i can see here and it's it's got a it's embossed n and h N and H London, it's a lovely little stamp there. BCM Filofax London, which was the uh, the shorthand address, if you like, back in the day. And then the model number is E two o one seven eight inch, a a, um, a ring size that we still have today, albeit it's twenty three millimeters. And then made in England, and it's got a a kind of copper colour to it. I like that. I like that very much. In fact, I like that. It's actually embossed as well. And it's just nicer than... Um, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, so this is my my 29-year-old uh, Filofax Sherwood, and it's not embossed at all. It's just, it's just been printed on the leather. Nevertheless, it's quite nice. And then... Uh, let's see, um, let's show you my, if I can make sure that I've got nothing in here that, uh, okay, so, uh, that's a typical embossing, uh, that you get on a modern file of hacks, uh, but that's sort of nice, but I'll tell you what, it just lifts it, it just lifts it, doesn't it, if you've got not only the embossing, but also you've got the, uh, what, you've got the, um, this isn't gold leaf or anything, is it? But it's just nice. It's just nice, isn't it? It's a nice, a nice design touch, and I love that. So, what are the? Um, why do I not? Why do I like this so much? Um, let's get down to brass tacks. So, um, many of you know that uh, I'm not a big fan of pen loops. Uh, I'm not a fan of fasteners uh, or pockets, and this. This Filofax has none of those things, and so it is it is perfect for me because I, I generally use the the personal size Filofaxes for indoor use. I have several on my desk, uh, although not not today. I've only got uh, only two personal sized on my desk today. This one and my Filofax Sherwood, but it is superbly utilitarian and there are a couple of a couple of features 
of this type of file effect, so specifically this one that I really, really love. And the first thing is, as you know what I'm going to say, is the flattability. You cannot get better than that. And if there's one thing, if I could rub a, a lamp and the genie popped out and gave me three wishes, apart from um, world peace and the ending of hunger, etc., etc., I would say to the genie, can you please make sure that Filofax address the issue of flattability and design their Filofaxes so that when they open, they stay open all by themselves. It's not rocket science. You just have to take one of these, have a look at how it's constructed, and then replicate that in the modern world. That's all I have to do. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll say no more about that because otherwise I'm I'm, go I'm going to uh, I'm going to have to stop it and re-record. <laughs> um, but there's something else. There's something else that just is. Uh, a sensational aspect, in my opinion, to this to this uh, binder, and it's the rings. Now, I cannot convey to you how nice those rings are when they open and shut. They're very crisp, but they have a light touch. Now, I don't know whether that light touch is due to being used for decades, or whether it's just that they they have a higher quality. Um, these are these feel even better than some of the models I have with the Krauss or Krauss rings, which are arguably the best in the business. But these are actually made by or imported by um, company a London-based company called, called Gilmex. Um, am I going to get the in short? Yes, I think I can. Okay, so Gilmex. It says Gilmex Foreign, as uh, as was... Um, I mean, it's very, very uh, colonial, isn't it? Foreign. Foreign manufacturer. Um, but anyway, um, Gilmex, as I understand it, um, started uh, in London in 1945 and they're still going making uh, or importing f f amongst other things fasteners not this type of fastener I couldn't see on their catalogue they're more like into binding now um, so I couldn't see anything remotely resembling a six ring ring mechanism like this but um, this is the thing now, as as many of you know, the file of vintage file faxes didn't change much um, from the sort of uh, pre-war era, the nineteen thirties, perhaps, to the uh, to the late seventies. Now, I suspect, and this is only conjecture. I'm not an expert, but I suspect that. Um, and the catalogue, the 1979 catalogue, lists this model, the E201, in uh, Morocco leather, uh, as um, it's their uh, it's their most popular material. And I suspect that this is one of their most popular models, and it's probably probably be spent its life on shelves i'm just looking it's hard to tell whether or not there's any there's more shelfware on the bottom sometimes that gives a clue as to whether or not it's being stored on a shelf and it's constantly being removed and replaced removed and replaced and you can get you can get some wear on the bottom but it doesn't look much different from the top to be honest um but but this is the thing. Uh, my hunch is that the models didn't change much over the decades. Um, I uh, I think there's a possibility that this might be older than at first appears. Um, it's got to be between 1945 and 1979. So... 
You know, I wouldn't be surprised unless someone out there wants to uh, correct me, and I'm happy to stand corrected if that is the case. But um, I would love, to, I would love to know a little bit. I was chatting on social media about this very subject yesterday. I would love to know a little bit more about the Farfax company, uh, Norman and Hill. Um, a little bit more uh, from this from this era, um, the nineteen twenties all the way up to the the nineteen eighty when when we all know a lot more about Farfax and the buying and selling and the and the yuppie era and the, the the decline and fall and the rise and the decline and then this sort of steady state where it's gone. Oh, I wouldn't say down market, but you know it is. They're providing fantastic fantastic economical uh, binders for uh, people that love filofaxes and there's no, there's no harm in that so I am a I remain a big fan of filofax but I am particularly a fan of this type of binder it is it is just so nice in a utilitarian way where my gut feeling is as these vintage binders get somewhere, they get a bit of life uh, put into them. I just think they look far more attractive, and you know, it is very rare these days that something that where the design is over a hundred years old, um, this sort of uh, this standard, this ring mechanism standard, was was uh, was introduced by Lafax in, in 2000, and, sorry, not 2000, 1910, I believe. So we're looking at a design that is over 100 years old and it's still it's still something that, uh, that uh, people enjoy today and it's very, very eminently usable and I'm going to use this. It's only a recent addition to my collection, but I am so pleased with the... the the function of these rings that I will probably use this for um, as a as a as a working binder, where it's going to perform a function where I am regularly opening and shutting the rings. There are some filofaxes, particularly my Sherwood, where I mean it's okay, it's okay, but the it's it's just not quite. It's it's better than modern ones for sure, but it just doesn't have this that certain tactile. Uh, I am I am uh, going overboard with the with the experience in inverted commas of opening and shutting these rings, but there's a certain something with these Gilmex rings that that uh, make me want to use this binder for something. I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet, but I. Uh, um, I'll leave it there. A wonderful, a wonderful piece of history, and as a working tool, it's going to be on my desk from now on. Thank you for watching, or listening, as the case may be, and until next time, goodbye. <laughs>